In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how we can leverage Copilot to write the VBA script for us. If a column changes in an Excel list, we want to go ahead and send an email notification. Now, this was actually a request from one of my clients, and I got it to work using these three applications. So I wanted to take the time to share this with you. Now, before we actually create this, I want to show you how this is up and running. So over here on the left, here is my Excel list, just a simple list, it could be longer. And over on the right, here is my actual email. And we can see we received the recent email notifying us that a column has changed in the Excel list. So for example, I can either add another record here or I'll keep it simple. I'll just go ahead and change the status column here. I'll go ahead and make these bold actually to make them kind of stand out. So I'll go ahead and make these bold. Okay, so let's say this job here, the very last one, that this is actually completed. So I'll change this to completed. And as you can see, we get the email right away. Right? So this is pretty much how it's working. So it's kind of like a Microsoft list. You can set up alerts that if a column changes, you can have Microsoft list email you. But now we can um, have that feature working for us right here in Excel. Now, in order to get this going, we do need a few things. Um, we do need to use VBA. I'll go ahead and open up the VBA code to show you what that looks like here. So here's the actual script that we can run. And I did not have to write any of this script. Copilot actually gave the script for me. And all I needed to do was to insert a module for this sheet, double click on the sheet, and go ahead and add this bit of code in here. So that's a big time saver. The only thing we need to do is to actually put in the actual email address that we want the message to be sent to. And you do have to make sure that you have your Outlook up and running as well before you actually open the Excel file and make those changes there as well. So let's start from the beginning and let's see how we can get Copilot to answer this question for us. So here we go. I have the Excel file. I am using um, Excel for the web. I just find it a lot easier to use Copilot with the web applications, but that's just my preference here. So here is, I copy that same list to the Excel file, and I'll go ahead and launch Copilot here. So here's the Copilot chat on the right side, and it's giving us a lot of suggestions in here, but I want to give it a specific prompt, and I just want to say, go ahead and send an email if the task, oh, I'm sorry, the status column changes. Okay, so here's my prompt. Send an email if the status column changes. So just being very specific, we have the name of the actual header here, which is the, the status column. I'll go ahead and let's see if I could actually put the email in here to send it to a specific email. Let's see, I'll do that. I'll say send an email to So this is just my sandbox here. So I'll go ahead and click this, and let's see what this will do for me. It should tell me that I cannot do it for me automatically, but we can use VBA to get this accomplished. So let's just wait for the code, and it should tell us how to launch VBA and how to actually paste the code into a VBA module. So here you go. To achieve this in Excel, you need to use VBA as Excel formulas cannot send emails or detect changes automatically. Here's the actual code. So I just need to simply go ahead and copy this code. All right. So here's the actual VBA. So no need to actually, you know, try to figure out what the VBA code is actually giving it to us right here, which is pretty cool. We can see it's declaring variables here and it's going to actually work for us. The only thing we need to do is to, well, we actually do not need to do it. it. It's already incorporating the email in here. If you need to make any changes, you can, you can change that. Okay, so step one, I copied the code here. Now I need to go to my Excel file. We cannot use VBA for Excel on the web. So I'll go to Excel, press Alt plus F11 to open the VBA editor, double click the worksheet, and paste the code into the window. Save the workbook as a macro enabled file. And typically I like to close it and then reopen it. 
And so let's see how that works. I'll head back over to Excel for the desktop here. So I'm just going to take this existing Excel file. I'm going to copy this same list. I'll press Control N to create a new Excel file. I'll paste that list in here, make any cosmetic changes that you want to. And this is book one. I'll call this one, I'll just change the name here. I'll just call this, um, I'll call this book two. But for now, I'll, I'll save that once I copy and paste the code in. Okay, so here's the code. I'll go ahead and copy this back to the clipboard here. And here we go. So I'll copy this in. And I'll go ahead and open up my Excel file here. All right. So here is my book one. And let's see, I'll go ahead and fix this here. Okay, so if you have, a, if you have your developer tab turned on, you can just click on developer and open up Visual Basic. The shortcut is right there. You can also press Alt plus F11. So I'll go ahead and do that. And let's see, so this one, okay, yeah, so here it is. So here's the actual one here. Now it says we need to go ahead and double click on the sheet, but from experience, I know we need to insert a module. So I'll go ahead and click on the insert tab here and I'll go ahead and insert a module. And now I can go ahead and double click on sheet one and I can go ahead and paste the code in here. And that's it. So we can see it's already in here. Everything is good to go. Let's just do a quick check here to make sure that it's locking onto the correct range. So F2 to F7. Okay, that looks pretty good. The code is actually a little different from the original one here, but let's see if this one will actually work. Okay, so here's the code. I'll go ahead and, and save this as a macro enabled workbook. So I'll click save here and I'll go ahead and save this as a macro enabled workbook. Here we go. I'll go ahead and press save. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's right. I'll just save this as book two and I'll save this to my desktop actually. And then I'll go ahead. That's fine. Okay, so there we go. So I've saved it. So what I'm going to do now is close it. So I'll close both of them. I'll close this file as well. Don't want to save that. So now what I'll do, I'll go ahead and reopen that file. So here is book two. And I'll move this over here. And let's just see if this works. I'll also pull up my email so I can see the change right away. Okay, so here we go. I'll go ahead and make a change to one of these columns. I'll change this to in progress. And there you go. You can see it's already, right? It's already sending me the email, notifying me that the column has actually changed. So mission accomplished. So really, really nice feature there. We leverage Copilot to ask us for the VBA code and we inserted it into Excel and we instantly receive the notification. So notice we don't have to actually run the macro manually. It's a trigger action. So if any data changes in the status column, it automatically triggers the email for us. So we don't need to click on the developer tab and actually run the macro. So this is a really, really nice tool. And I think it's a really big game changer because now we can use Copilot to grab the VBA code that would take us a very long time to actually run. Well, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, please share this video and please like and subscribe as well. Until next time.